All right, welcome back. My name is Corey, and you're my rubber ducks for the afternoon. And what we're doing is we are, of course, building Tang, a template language, and we're building it from scratch out of modernish, modern where appropriate. How about that? C++ and tools such as Bias and Flex, Google Test, ICU, and of course using Vim as our editor. This is 100% live coding, as I've said many times before. Nothing up my sleeves. I don't have anything pre-prepared -pre other than notes uh, about directions I want to go or don't forget that um, this tool behaves in a certain way. That means you see my errors, you see everything. So that's fine. Um, let's see, something I forgot in the last episode is I forgot to commit the a documentation update before I tagged it and pushed it so I fixed that the tag now includes uh, the the updated documentation in fact if I say uh, oh I should show you what I'm typing at if I say git log there git log uh, the very last uh, well it was this uh, where we did the default print uh, I had forgotten to I updated the documentation on screen. I just forgot to uh, commit it. So it is now tagged as the episode 31. That's fine. Now, if I say get status, you'll notice there is a difference. And the reason is because, well, this is the tang.hpp and that's where I keep my to-do list. So if I say get diff, it'll show me what the difference is. And uh, I have removed the print uh, basic in the in the kind of what's what's planning out because we did that last time and I forgot to commit that but I'm adding in oh yeah we need a ternary operator completely forgot uh, to add that in so update the to do okay simple enough <laughs> now what is what are we doing today in all of I wanted to do the ternary but then I realized we had not written the and the logical and and logical or operators and that seems like that would be a simple enough thing to do because we already have binary operators and in a way yeah it, it kind of is um, but it's not because it we need to do short circuit evaluation what short circuit evaluation you ask well I'm, I'm glad you asked if I were to say some expression, uh, I'm just typing here, some expression A and some expression B. I'm not going to do A and D for the and, but I'm just saying for the sake of the uh, example. We would need to evaluate the expression A, and that expression could be something quite large. That's fine. Uh, but we evaluate it as A, and... Um, what was I going to say? My brain just stopped working. <laughs> we evaluate it, and if it is true, if he evaluates to a, a logical true, then we would need to evaluate B. But if A is false, we don't have to evaluate B. And a lot of programming languages act this way. It's called short circuit evaluation. Likewise, if um, if we have an an A or B, if A evaluates to be true, then we don't have to evaluate B. Uh, yeah. But if it's false, then we do have to evaluate B. So we need to write that into our language. It's just more efficient. And we couldn't do it when we uh, originally created our booleans and the not, because that's the other logical operator, right? We've got ands, ors, and nots. Well, we've already written the not. It's a, it's a unary uh, operator. But we couldn't do this at the time because in order to, do, uh, to implement short circuit evaluation, we needed jumps. And we did not have jumps in our language. And in fact, we still don't have the right jumps, but we'll talk about that. At least I don't think we do. Uh, I had to look at the opcodes again. But let's just jump in and see where this goes. If possible, I would like to do this without having to um, 
without having to add more AST node types. Uh, I was originally going to do a separate one for the AND and for the OR, but now I think I'm just going to add them to the binary. Uh, as I've said many times before, I'm not copying and pasting code. I'm not necessarily following a script. I am coding something from scratch, but of which the general subject I do have experience. Yeah, so that means some of this I make the design decisions as we go along. All right, so let's just jump in then. And we know that we're going to need to edit, let's see, the include for the AST node binary, the source for the AST node binary, because we've got to add what we need to add uh, to those. We're going to need the include for the opcode. And if we do that, then we need the source. No, we won't have to add it. Yes, we will probably. Uh, for the program dump and the source program execute, what else? We're going to need, we've got the definitely flex bison and what else obviously the test I think that's going to be it so for here on the right hand side we're just going to say clean make clean and then make test watch and it's just going to start um, compiling while we are on our left hand side now uh, what for the operations let's do let's add and an or There, now it's exactly 80 characters. And this will be or and this is our language. We could write it with um, the word and for and and or for or like Python does and, and a few other languages. Uh, we could support both. I would like the double ampersand and the double pipe for and and or. I'm used to it. Makes sense. And to me it's consistent with the, the usage of, in the language, but anyway, that's fine. Anything else that I need to do here? I don't believe so. So, now we need to go to the next thing in the buffer and we need to add our descriptions we've got that and now the compile this is where things change what we need to do is say, first of all, if this op is equal to I might be able to do it like that. And else if this op is double equal to or else you know what we 
what we're going to do is we're just going to put a um, <laughs> Uh, we'll, we'll end those with returns so that we don't have to put everything in a, the rest of this statement, uh, the rest of this function into a big else statement, which means we have to re-indent it and everything. Uh, I know the design philosophy that some people like to use of you should only have one exit point from a, from a function sometimes. Sometimes that works. Sometimes it's just messy. Um, this will be fine. So... First, we're going to require that the left hand side is done first then there uh, and re and or require short circuit evaluation there and so what if it is an and well we need to do a couple things first of all we need to say is this a false The problem is I don't think we've got the right opcode. So what opcodes do we have? Um, our opcodes are, so we're currently in two, our opcodes are in three, okay. We've got a jump if false with a pop. The problem is in this case, if it's and, we just kind of want to jump past the evaluation of the right-hand side and leave the false on there. So we don't want to pop. So I think we're going to have a jump if false that's not a pop. Copy val if I don't like copy. How about read? Read val if false set PC to PC number. True if uh, there. Okay, so now we're going to have a jump JMPF and JMPT. We need to, that we're in the dump. Okay, so it's JMPF, JMPF pop, JMPT, JMPT pop. Okay, so I didn't mean to do it that way. I should just done. So, JMPF without a pop. Just a regular. 
that's fine. Now JMPT without a pop. JMPT, okay. Um, it's, well, it's gonna keep giving me this error until I fix it. So, going to ink these as 25 okay and the reason is okay so this is now going to be our jump false without a pop we're just not popping okay <laughs> Same way with the uh, jump true. Without a pop, and we're just not popping. Everything else is the same. Simple enough. Let's go back to the binary compile. Uh, because it doesn't like this. So I'm thinking the easiest way Okay, so everything else, so I'm gonna say if it does not equal and, and this op does not equal or, then, okay. Now, we need to, at the bottom, add our our and and or. And just remember, at this point, only the left-hand side is on the stack. And I'm, I'm going to just double check. If it doesn't equal and, and doesn't equal or, then right-hand side compile. Yes. Oops, there we go. All right, so now what do we do with the and? Uh, jump if false so if and is the first thing is false we don't have to evaluate the next one where are we jumping to we don't know yet but we put a placeholder of zero so what does that mean we need to have a how did I do this on some of the others um, Let's edit the if statement. Source uh, 
AST node if else sure We gotta go back to two. Okay. So I did it like that. And this is not a uh, condition false jump. This is more like, um, no, that was right. Condition false jump, sure. Now we need to um, yeah, that was right. Uh, compile the right hand side. However, okay, so what this is doing is we've compiled the left hand side. Now we're here. We're saying if it's false, jump. What if it's true? And this is an and. Well, we've got to, there's now a true on the stack. We need to pop that off the stack, compile the right hand side, and that'll be our answer. Whatever is left on the right hand side. Okay. However, if it's false, we need to jump past this. And in order to do that, we use the set jump target. Whoops. And so for our comments, because this is, it gets complicated. This is, um, the LHS and this is going to be remove LHS from stack evaluate RHS okay And then this one is uh, target condition false jump and it is going to be the get bytecode size. Now normally, yeah, we would say plus one, but not in this case. Um, that is, we just want it to go at this point, whatever the next ex, uh, the next uh, statement is. Why did it we have plus one earlier? Because it was for a statement, and that would there would be a pop added after it after that statement. Uh, excuse me, it was an if, yeah, an if then block, whatever. And it's going to leave something on the stack, so this would pop that off of the stack. Um, that that plus one, excuse me, there would be a pop added after it, so the plus one was to jump past the pop. That is not the case here. We want something left on the stack, and it's not going to be popped unless uh, it's there's nothing else left to the statement. But um, anyway, in this particular case, there should still be something left on the stack. And there, there probably won't be a pop. It'll be the, the first statement of the next expression. So is that all correct? So evaluate the left-hand side, 
jump if false uh, to where we don't know yet but it's that and we could even do this do it like that yeah that would be fine as well and then right hand side compile okay now what about for the or for the or it's similar in fact we're going to there evaluate the left hand side but we're going to jump if it's true jump if true because we don't need to evaluate the right hand side and now this will be set the jump if true target Or could we just call that condition jump? Yes. But this is fine as well. And again, so if it's false, um, then it will pop that false off the stack and um, try out the uh, right hand side yeah and whatever the right hand side leaves that's going to be the true or false all right so now we need to go into our lexer and add an and an or into our and then into bison so What will these look like? They're I think we're going to put them here. And for the ampersands, I don't think we're going to need anything special. But for the pipes, those are regex characters. So we're, we need to uh, preface them with a backslash. So we're making an and and or. It should give me an error saying, hey, I don't know what these are. And we will say, of course, because I need to tell you by editing bison. And. Oh no, I don't want to put it here. Well, I mean, I could. But we'll put them here. There we go. And we didn't have to include any additional files, which is always nice. So now these are just, these are expressions. Yes, so there we go. We will do the ampersand and the uh, the pipes, and this is going to be and or and everything else should be right. See if it gives us any errors. <laughs> no errors yet, but we haven't written any tests. All right, where are we going to do this?
control flow, assignment, code block, expressions. Okay, so these are going to have to be expressions and let's just yank that much. And this is going to be and and I'm going to say let's say true and true true and false false and true false and false okay so true and true should be true true and false should be uh, false false and true should be there we go there should only be one true <laughs> There can be only one, and uh, no, that that should be fine. Now this doesn't test the short circuit evaluation yet. We'll get there. It says it's passing. Let's do this. Let's do a C out of P4 dot dump bytecode. I'm always suspicious when things pass. Oh, there's something in the background that I only just now notice, and I think that is me with a green screen. Yes. Hello. <laughs> Okay, we're back. Uh, here it is. So there is a Boolean. What are we doing? False and false. So Boolean false. Jump if false to seven. Well, that would be past this. Um, four is a pop, and five would be a push a Boolean false. And I uh, say, why seven? Because, well, this, if Boolean is the five, false was the six, and then seven is the very next one. It's correct. Okay, uh, so this all looks right. We need to test the short circuit evaluation. And the question is, is how do we do that? I'm glad you asked because I don't know yet. No, I mean, basically what we need to do is say um, this is simple a is equal to one and a is equal to two and then a and just tell me what A is. Is it a 1 or is it a 2? If short circuit evaluation is working, it should be a 1. Is that correct? No, it should be a 2. Yeah. It should be 2. Why? Because... Here. The reason is, so if this is A is equal to zero, then it should evaluate as false, and it won't evaluate the A is equal to two. So then this should be a zero. And now, everything should be passing. Uh, it didn't look like P5. A is equal to zero. So let's see 
what we've got going on here. I may not... I think I know what it is. I don't think I've written the ampersand, uh, the the and or the or for um, for comparing. What are they called? <laughs> I wrote the stupid class name, uh, the garbage collected. Yeah, but either way, the dump byte code for this, just so we have it. Uh, a is of course uh, the stack by position by nullval integer zero poke that into stack position zero uh, jump if it's false because it's still on the stack jump if it's false to 12 and which will pop it and then peak um, zero yes Okay, that all seems correct. So now the question is, is the jump if false, what is that doing? So for that, we need to look at program execute. There we go. Jump if false here we go and we say if condition is double equal to false that should be working Let's, let's double check the garbage collected stuff. Um, we need to edit the include for garbage collected. That's fine. And when I compare it with a Boolean, okay, so it will do that. not include source garbage collected I call the uh, I just call the the direct is equal val okay so it's whatever the is equal is and do I have that set up for integers Maybe I don't. It's a good question. Let's let's consider that. So in the include for computed expression integer, do I have I do not have an is equal for a bool. That is why. And now I need to edit the include, no, not include, the source for computed expression integer. Bool. And the error on the right hand side is just, hey, you told me this function existed, but it doesn't exist yet. Um, well, we're writing it right at this moment. See if this behaves any better. We passed. That means we need to provide this is equal bool to all of our uh, all of our types. We need to do it for the include for a computed expression. Boolean probably has it. Yeah, it does. 
for the include for a computed expression error does it have one it's always going to be a false okay that may be just fine um, for the include for a computed expression float it definitely needs it though I mean it's not gonna have it yet so the source of a computed expression float uh, there yanked one line too many Okay, and now I think I made a mistake. Yeah, it should just be that. Oh, of course. <laughs> I did not make a mistake. I made a mistake just a moment ago. That's correct. There, and it should be there. Probably need to do it include uh Computed expression string probably needs it. Okay, and the source for a computed expression string. So boolean and val is equal to bool of this val dot length. And that's how we will determine whether or not it is. All right, are there any others? Include computed expression. What about just a standard computed expression? source computed expression and uh, so I'm always saying false but if I'm asking if it's if val is false I want it to be yeah okay I'm stealing this computed expression <laughs> uh, or this ternary. So if uh, this, if the type ID, right, because again, this is a virtual function. So it may be that um, that they just didn't override this, whoever is creating a child class. So I'm saying if I'm, Specifically on a computed expression, that means I know what I'm doing. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say val is equal to a false. Is that right? Yeah, because if it's if they if I'm a null, 
and they say, are you false? Null is going to be a false, so that should return true. Yes, this is correct. Say, Corey, can we test this? Of course we can. Just a moment. All right, so let's go back to our tests. What number was that? Four? No, it was not. Uh, our tests. Eight. There we go. And now... So this is going to be point, 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 Those should pass now. Oops. <laughs> okay. So it's we've tested tested it for booleans, integers, floats. We need to test it for strings. All right, so what will this be? It should be a null string, which, um, or an empty string. Why not? <laughs> should be an empty string. And this one should not be an empty string. It should be foo. I don't want to use foo. Sure, why not? that works we're still passing tests that's a good thing all right and so now we've done it with strings pointer and it should still be a null pointer oh Okay, the good news 
is that I think we've covered all of our use cases. Now we need to do it for the ores. Okay, so I'm going to there we go, get all of these on the screen. And we are going to uh, five twenty four. Okay. Up through five fifty. And what we're going to do is we're going to substitute the double ampersand for the double pipe. Do it more than once. Okay, that's nice. So now, true or true is true. True or false should be true. False or true should be true. And false or false should be, well, false. Now in this case, A is equal to zero is gonna fail, so we should get the two. A is equal to one will pass, so that it should just go that far. This should be a two. This should be a one. This should be a foo. This should also be a foo. This should be a two. And this should be a true. See if that works. 29 tests passing. Yes, before it was 28. I can scroll up if you want. See, before it was 28. Right there. And now it is 29. <laughs> that is always a good thing. So what do we have? We have our ands, we have our ors, we've got um, basically casting to a or testing against no it's really casting testing as a bool I think that works check everything make sure everything makes sense nothing stands out nothing jumps out at us Ah, that. I don't want that there. And that's in our computer expression.cpp. everything else still works so we didn't break our compiles with all of the other statements we don't need to add any nope or I didn't add any files that I need to add so okay and we're going to say add logical and and or Evaluation. All right. And now HTML index. There we go. And well, I guess we didn't add much. The only thing might be under the class list for the binary is, yeah, we've got our and and or added.
do I not have any? This is the include AST node binary. Y'all aren't supposed to let me get away with this. Um, <laughs> there we go, just update some stuff really quickly. we have a description it's a very minor thing but and with that oh, hey it uh it added a few more files okay Episode, I don't know. Episode 32, hey. There we go. For episode 32. You can push origin master. Yeah, I'll get tag. And that should have been dash A. There we go. All right, so now where does this put us? Uh, first of all, uh, we're almost about, we're about to break the 4,000 lines of code plus 1,500 lines of comments. So we're at a 5,500 line uh, project, not including 800 blank lines. <laughs> Uh, anyway, it's growing. But we have ands and ors, so we can have now uh, more sophisticated logical operations. That's fine. Uh, we've got... I want to do the ternary just so that it's those are all kind of done. And... And then we'll probably be moving on to um, working on this string stuff. And I'll be honest, I've been ever so slightly putting it off. Why? Because it's a lot of work. And I've, I've done it more than once before, and, ever, and I know how much work it is. And I'm looking at this, we're on episode 32, and we've got a lot of stuff created. And... It's, I mean, it's, it's good quality um, content. And I'm saying, I don't mean YouTube content. I'm, I mean, uh, in terms of uh, code quality content. Um, I would have thought that we would have been further, but it's because the other times when I've written this, I've done it, you know, just kind of on the side here and there for fun and I wasn't really counting the number of hours and now I have a very present you know ever present ever obvious um, tally of hours going in we're about to hit the one hour mark don't worry I'm wrapping up and uh, there's a lot of time and I was originally thinking there's no way I'll, I'll hit the uh, the three digit mark for episodes on this I'm just gonna put three digits there you know, episode 032, what you just saw, uh, just in case. I'm still hoping we don't hit it, but we've got another 50 lines of things that need to be added for this to be a 
a serious option uh, for, for certain uses. So we'll be working on it for a while. Uh, having said that, I'm hoping you enjoy the journey. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time.